Okay, let's take a look at uh, at our homebrew receiver. Actually, there's a lot of activity on 20 meters now. It's right in the middle of sweepstakes. It's November 2013. And uh, let's tune the VFO here. Open up the bandwidth a little more. A lot of activity. Let's turn the volume down here just for a minute and talk about the receiver. This uh, Here's our uh, all homebrew receiver built uh, Manhattan style, i.e. ugly construction. <clears throat> we usually use uh, copper clad uh, fiberglass boards to uh, lay out and build our various modules and projects. Works real well. It's easy to do and uh, very forgiving. You can make changes on the fly very easily. Uh, the chassis is uh, like most of the chassis that we use in our homebrew station. Uh, as previously, it was something else. In this case, this chassis was a, a uh, an antenna tuner that we got it out and we're using for the receiver. Uh, the station has lots of similar projects that all together come together and make our uh, all homebrew station. Power supplies and transmitters and uh, and this receiver and amplifiers. And QSK box, and I think we've shown some of these in previous videos. But let me just focus on this receiver. Just going around from uh, module to module inside on the upper left, that's our uh, uh, variable mute delay uh, board. Comes out to a control knob on the front uh, chassis, and it allows us to set the um, the amount of delay that the mute kicks in and stays. Uh, if we're not using QSK, if we just want to mute the receiver for CW, we do use that function sometimes. I can also turn that off from the front panel. Uh, towards the center and the front here, uh, lower left of the screen, is actually the main module for the receiver. It's a uh, super heterodyne single conversion receiver, very kind of a typical circuit. There's a lot of them out there on the internet floating around. It uses two uh, SA612 mixers, uh, and uh, I'm using a 9 MHz IF. Uh, four 9 megahertz uh, crystals uh, set up as a con filter after the initial mixing uh, takes place uh, and I have uh, we have uh, variable uh, capacitance uh, between uh, each one of the crystals and that control comes out to the front panel and allows us to uh, with a DC voltage uh, allows us to control the bandwidth uh, from about 300 Hertz up to about 5 kilohertz 5,000 Hertz so we can uh, do a pretty good job on CW or even up on sideband which I don't actually use a whole lot. That uh, little module also has after the uh, after the con filter it has a little MMIC uh, amplifier uh, for approximately 20 dB additional gain uh, before it uh, goes on out to, a, to an audio amplifier on board on that circuit. To the right uh, another audio amplifier that we use in uh, in the base uh, circuit uh, for additional audio amplification before we go out to a speaker jack or headphone jack. Next module up is actually an active audio filter based on an LM348 op amp and uh, there's an onboard uh, LM386 audio amplifier with that as well. Um, so we actually have uh, from a selectivity perspective both variable IF and an uh, active audio filter it's a three-stage filter, so we can select just the low-pass filter portion of it or the first or second stage of active audio selectivity, and it, it works pretty well. We use them both together very often, that and the IF bandwidth change. A little module towards the back with the two relays on it. That's a, uh, a uh, incoming uh, low-pass filter for the receiver, uh, selectable. It's broken up into two parts, and we can select the one for the low frequencies below 12 megahertz or uh, alternately select the high frequency uh, low pass filter for everything else on up to 10 meters. That's selectable, actually it's selectable from a uh, microprocessor control digital pin that's built into this uh, DDS VFO. This is what we use to tune the receiver and also the transmitter in transceive mode. And so uh, we, we select that low pass incoming filter automatically via that. 
Also, there's an external uh, preamplifier that we use uh, on the higher bands that kicks in automatically as well. It's microprocessor controlled. And it's actually back in the back, small box right down there that's partially buried in all the wires and cables. But that's a little uh, 2N 5109 amplifier. It's pretty quiet. We use that as a preamp. And uh, it's good for about 20 dB gain uh, coming in on the receive signals.